Something's going to happen. Something wonderful. G'day fans and welcome back, if you want to call it that. Here we are. We did not want to be here and clearly nobody else wants to be here. I was going to say at the moment we had nobody watching us at all, but uh, luckily it's now down to four people. So here we are, the most unwanted show in the entire universe. COVID is back, lockdown is back, and for that reason, we're back. How unbelievably painful is that? All right, kids, guess what? Because you wanted it, we've got the El Cheapo Quicko, Quicko Quickie Movie Quiz. How good is this? Now, there we go. So you're probably wondering, what is the topic going to be tonight? And I can guarantee that if everybody or anybody gets all these questions right, I'll be very, very impressed. So the theme tonight is an anniversary of ones. So because it's now 2021, the uh, questions are all based around sci-fi movies that came out in the ones. So 1901, 1911, 1921, 31, 41, 51, et cetera, et cetera. Now, it's all multiple choice. Keep your own scores. You don't win a prize for getting it all right or getting it all wrong. It's just a bit of shits and giggles, right? So uh, we'll have a bit of a laugh, and this will hopefully finish off for the next half an hour. So very, very cool. All right, so it actually the movie came out in 1902, but nothing else came in 1901, so we're just going to cheat the rules a little bit. In Trip to the Moon, what were the moon inhabitants called? So was it A, Polonites, B, Selenites, C, Molonites, or D, just moon dudes? What do you two reckon? I, I'd say that D is really tough to uh, to make a decision on there, but uh, i go uh, B because I think uh, the 60s uh, trip to the moon, the characters that Harryhausen did were Selenites. Very good. Dude, what do you reckon? I'm going to say B for Molonites because it sounds like moon Hang on, Molonites is C, dude. You, 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 what did I say? You oh, said right. B, Molonites. Oh. <laughs> so you're going for Molonites. the C, are you? Going All right, everybody, C. keep your own scores. Feel free to put them up here. Uh, yeah, and the idea, Michelle, is you're not meant to have an idea. That's why we've got a multiple choice. And when in doubt, always go for your D. So, yeah, very, very cool. All right, that was 1901. So the only science fiction movie made in 1911 is this. In what film is London attacked by unknown airships? Was it A, the aerial anarchists? B, the Aerial Anarchus 2, C, the Aerial Anarchus 3, or D, the Aerial Anarchus 4, the quest for a better title. How about that? What do you reckon, guys? Say, say D again. Uh, the Aerial Anarchus 4, the quest for a better title. <laughs> Aerial Anarchus 4. Aerial Anarchus 4. Just I think it I think it'd have to be A. I mean, I don't think they were making sequels back in 1911. There you go. It was the only one that I could find. Actually, yeah. I mean, you would have thought there was a sci-fi movie in 1911 in the first place. So there you go. People have got their own scores. Put them up there. Very, very good. All right, we move along to guess what? What's coming up next? 1921. So The Mechanical Man featured what classic sci-fi trope? Was it A, two robots fighting, B, a space battle, C, a laser blaster firing, or D, the first pew-pew sound effect? <laughs> I would, I would almost have to say that it almost feels like an, an A, but um, I would tend to go C. Very good. What do you reckon, dude? Yeah, I reckon it's a C. Very good stuff. Now, believe it or not, 19, it was the only movie made this year and it came from Italy of all places. So uh, there you go. Very good. So Lee, we move on. Guess what's coming up next, kids? Yes, it's 1931. So which comet was going to impact the Earth in End of the World? Was it A, Inkers, I think I say pronounce it, B, Halley's, Halley's, Halley's Comet, yep, C, Lexels, or D, the one from the film Meteor, or how about Deep Impact, or what about Armageddon? <laughs> what do you reckon, kids? Oh, for something I'm different, I'm going to go A. I'm, I'm going to um, go C. I don't think it's Halley's Comet. That just seems too obvious. Very good. Good stuff there, don't you? See, who remember oh, and, these, and the one from these movies? That's, that's funny thing. And we were actually discussing life. before we went on air that apparently Jeff Rowe has this, the silent audio tape version of that 1911 movie, which is kind of cool. All <laughs> right, now we're heading into a bit more familiar territory, or are we? 1941. 
the monster and the girl. What animal is the gangster's brain implanted into? So is it A, a grizzly, grizzly, try again, A, a gorilla, B, a grizzly bear, C, a dragon, or a D, a Star Trek fanboy? <laughs> Jeez. I think, I think it's B. B, yep. What do you reckon, Jeff? I'm, I'm absolutely going to go A, because I know back in the 1940s, there were actually guys that um, owned their own gorilla suits and uh, did a lot of movies, so A, gorilla. <laughs> Very good. I love the rationale and the logic. It'd be funny if it was in a Star Trek fanboy. The idea being that Star Trek didn't even exist in the 40s, but, hey, it doesn't matter. It works for the joke. All right, then. I'm seeing all these letters and answers coming up on the screen. I've got no idea what people are answering to, but it doesn't really matter. All right, now we're getting to more familiar territory, 1951. So what planet did the Ark ship land on in When Worlds Collide? Was it A, Mars, B, Zyra, C, Bellus, or D, Houston? <laughs> Because we all know about oh, Planet Houston. <laughs> I, I, it's a choice between two, but um, I'm going to go B. Very good. Dude? Yeah, yeah, I'll go B as well. Very good stuff there. I hope this is like mind-bending for everybody at home. This is the most exciting entertainment you can get on this particular show, which is kind of cool. All right, so we're going to move on to more familiar territory for everybody. 1961. So how many nude on the moon films were made? A, none, B, one, C, two, or D, not enough, man. I need to get me more nudie action on the moon. <laughs> oh, the obvious answer is D, isn't it? But uh... <laughs> <laughs> what do you reckon, guys? C, I reckon, I reckon there's, but Jeff Ray's right, there's not enough. <laughs> I mean, that, that, that has to be the right answer. Yep. Otherwise, uh, I can't imagine nude on the moon. Unless it's an Italian um, art house film. <laughs> I love Lee that. Yes, you the Greg D -D. <laughs> you reckon, guys, it's an answer? That would be a 36D. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> so at least you say, Lee, at least I'm keeping abreast of the situation. Now, what do you reckon the answer is? D. D, what about you, uh, dude? Uh, what I put down, C. All right, cool. Very good. All right, we move on. 1971. This is a bit more uh, a bit more of a serious question. Who was THX 1138's female partner? Was it A, LUH3417, B, SEN5241, C, SRT5752, or D, this is easy one, A, B, C, 1, 2, 3, 4? <laughs> I think I, I'm going to have a guess. I think it's A. Very good. Dude? Yeah, I'm going to say A because B is a radio station, isn't it? <laughs> A sports radio, sports, sports entertainment radio. network. So, uh, yes, very, very, very good. All right. So, uh, oh, hang on. Thomas is out of sequence. Oh, dude, not good. All right. And uh, all right, we move on. Guess what? This one should be an easy one for everybody now. 1981. There we go. Complete the title of the film, The Incredible Shrinking What? A man, B woman, C lawyer, or D fanboy. And as we know, fanboys don't tend to shrink. They tend to expand. <laughs> but uh, there you go. <laughs> Oh, that's an easy one. I'm letting I'm, I'm letting MPS answer first, just to see what he says. Yeah. Oh, thanks. I, I think it's I think it's woman. I think it's B. Memory. All right. Cool. It is Very woman. Uh, it's a movie with Lily Tomlin playing the incredible. Oh, movie. mate, you've just ruined the answer for me. You can't wait till the answers come on, man. You're jumping in early, son. So uh, I could be cool. wrong. See, I could be wrong. Yeah, yeah good. Yeah, I reckon. Yeah, the shrinking fanboy is the way to go. So that'd be a good name for a movie. The incredible shrinking fanboy. All right, here we go. So, what's uh, 1991? So, acting actor Christian Slater made a cameo appearance in what film? Was it A, Abraxas, <laughs> Guardians of the Universe? It's D, isn't it? Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey, C, Star Trek Six, Undiscovered Country, or D, Ghost Bastards, even though that was made in 1992. But well, you never know, he could have popped in for a minute. However, having said that, we actually did know a guy called Christian Slater who could have actually appeared in it, but he didn't. So, anyway, what do you reckon, guys? Easy, I, don't like Jeff easy. Really, I think, I think yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's C. Yeah, I think it's C as well. Yeah, very good. I mean, now, it's kind of funny. In the Star Wars fan community, there was the guy, Christian Slater. And uh, so had he actually been put into the movie, that would have been the absolute winner. Imagine Dee Ghostbusters being the winner. So how good is that? He's, All he's right, only, so we're moving right along, and we're going to a brand new decade. 2001, Krull, Limbo, and Attar were all characters from what film? Was it A, Final Fantasy, The Spirits Within, 
B, Planet of the Apes, you know, the other version. C, Ghosts of Mars. And D, I could not think of a joke here, but if you guys can come up with a really funny answer, you get a bonus five points. <laughs> Names of three different dancers, the Limbo, the Krull, and the Atar. And don't ask about the Atar because you need four people for that one. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking they're all characters from the uh, Wild Women of Wongo. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. And anybody at, at home, yeah, you guys watching this, you can come up with a really good, an a funny answer if you can't figure out the other three. Uh, yeah, you get a bonus five points. So, uh, you know. oh, I, I know what the answer is. What the real answer? All I right, think very so. Cool. Very yeah. cool. Um, um, I think it's going to be Plan the Apes because that definitely came out in 2001, whereas I think Ghost of Mars was 1999. No, and no they're all. No, the, 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 no, the films, they're all they're actually 2001 films. They all came out. In oh, I think. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't pick a movie from a different year. I make a, made a point of looking them up. So, yes. So oh, Ghost I, of I was, and I was thinking I was on the right track because the only movie I remember from 2001 is Playing the Apes. Yeah. No, I think I think it's the Ghost of Mars. Hang on, let's see, dude. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> oh, sorry, I thought you said B. All right, very good. And All no right. one at home has given me a really, really good answer. So Jeffra gets the bonus five points for the Wild Women of Wonga. So Woo! there you go. Very good. All right, we've only got a couple left now. So there we go. All right, so uh, 2011, who or what is Zeus? A battle robot from uh, Real Steel, a transformer from Dark of the Moon, a mutant from X-Men First Class, or a superhero <laughs> from Green Lantern? It's. Uh, I know which answer it is. I'm. I'm, I'm waiting to see what NPS says. Yep. I, th I think it's A for memory. Yeah, right. It is A. Very good. I'm okay. trying to think. There's no. There's no Transformers called Zeus. There's no mutants called Zeus. Although there is a character in the DC universe called Zeus, but that's another story. Um, um, there you go. I like this from the vial. Talk nudie to me. <laughs> 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 uh, you, you don't want to see that episode not with our shirts off that's that's yeah, yeah exactly right very very good all right and lucky last as you could probably tell we're in 2021 we're only halfway through the year mech this is an easy one mecha godzilla appears in which film little fish chaos walking godzilla versus kong or a quiet place too <laughs> <laughs> this is so quiet. i love that that's cute uh... <laughs> So there you go. So tally up all your answers, everybody. If you get that one wrong, I'll be very disappointed in everyone. So um, I could not think of a uh, 2021. I was like, yeah, right. And there's actually been a few films that have come out this year, believe it or not. So, uh, but I didn't reckon, recognize any of them. So I thought that'd be quite good. All right. So them answers. And these early ones will probably really spin you out. So I'd be happy, curious to see if you can remember what it is that you uh, picked. So there you go. All right. So in 1901, which in actual fact was 1902, but uh, yeah, playing with semantics. Semantics in trip to the moon. What were the moon inhabitants called? And you are right, lads. It was the Selenites. So there mm. you go. And what happened to the Selenites in that movie? Do you remember? I couldn't uh, hear what they were was... playing during the film, so I don't know. <laughs> well, being the world's first science fiction movie, the what you want to do is for humanity, human beings to meet another race, species. Uh, of aliens uh, living in a, in a different part of the galaxy, in this case the moon, and instead of learning from them and understanding who they are and getting to like learn their culture and who and what what their um, uh, like ideology is, no, the humans kill them. So uh, bash the shit out, and they all die, and they actually bring one back to Earth for exploitation to put in a zoo. So uh, there you go. There's a future humanity wrapped up in a nutshell. So there you go. All right. So. What was that? We come in peace, shoot to kill, shoot to That's kill. That's exactly what kill. they did. They, they killed them all and, and just kept, brought one back. So there you go. All right, 1911. What film, in what film is London attacked by unknown airships? And as we said, as, a, as we're saying, Jeff Rowe was saying at the start, oh, he thinks he's seen this. One, it's a lost movie, and two, it's a silent movie. So he couldn't hear it on a tape because he said he had an audio recording of it. <laughs> Jeff Rowe's got super hearing. That's what it is. So, which one? What did you guys think this was? Uh, B. A. Uh, yes, Jeff Rose is right. It was the first one, the, the Aerial Anarchist, and it's the only photograph I could find. So, uh, apparently, it's um, London is bombed by these unknown sort of invaders with these airships. So, make it that what you will. So, uh, uh, yes. Do they happen to be anarchists? Anarchists. What did I say? Anarchists. So, oh, it depends. You know, you say tomato, I no, say tomato. Tomato. I was going to say tomato, tomato. 
You said people yes. were being bombed by aerial things. I just thought Anarchus was like, you know, just figured with the title. Never mind, move on. Uh, but Jeffro was right. The logic was good. They hadn't even thought of sequels at this point. So, uh, yeah, exactly right. Would, would, All right. Would so, they be, would they be bombed by Anarchus Sky Bombers? <laughs> You're an idiot. All right, 9 to 21. The Mechanical Man featured what classic sci fi trope? I think uh, you both said C. Is that right? We did, yeah. Yeah, well, guess what, kids? You're wrong. It was two oh, robots a. fighting. Had a punch on. Apparently, it's the first time in sci fi history we had two robots having a bit of a bash up. So, the Mechanical Man title should have given it away for you. So, uh, there you go. They could have been doing other things. They could have. Been shooting laser bolts from all sorts of places. You, you never know if it was the first time you saw a mechanical man. True. Uh, and it was an Italian movie. I love the fact that I put in like the first pew pew sound effect. There was all silent movies. There was no pew pewing back then. So. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you see yeah, it on the screen. Funny, you hey? see it written on the screen like like you see it like in Batman. Oh. It says pew pew. Yeah, the intertitles. Yeah, exactly right. But yeah, two it's first time two robots had a bit of a punch up. Apparently, so how good is that? So and yeah, this movie came from Italy. The only sci fi movie made in nineteen twenty one. So there you go. All right, thirty one. Which comet was going to impact the Earth in end of the world? Uh, you, one of you said C, and the other one said A, or something. I said is that right? C. Yeah, I said, you said A. a. Yeah, sorry, uh, it was Lexels. Um, mm. but uh, and I don't even, don't know if there's even a photograph of it. So, uh, uh, yes. Robert Christo was the third queer that says that. Uh, sorry, Thomas, I've got no way. I have no idea with that that robot qu question. I assume it was the third queer that says only to uh, Sorry, Robert. Thomas, I haven't got you there, but I'm happy to put you on the screen anyway, old son. But uh, yes, good old Lexels. So there you go. All right, 41. Monster and the girl. What animals is the gangster's brain implanted into now? Jeffrey, I think you said a gorilla. What did you say, uh, mm. dude? The grizzly bear. No, uh, actually, Jeffrey was on the right track with this one. It was a gorilla, believe it or not. Yay. So, uh, and the idea being that apparently he's like the gangster gets put into the gorilla's body and then he can go around and like exact his revenge on everybody. But uh, uh, yeah, that would make sense if you know your robot monsters and all the rest of it. Yeah, there were sort of gorilla suits running around. So, uh, yeah, I like the idea of a Star Trek fanboy, even though Star Trek didn't exist then. But uh, what the hell? So, there you go. Monster and the girl. I mean, yeah, make of that what you will. All right. Uh, all right, what planet did uh, Arkship land on when worlds collide? What did you guys say? That's said zero. Yeah, what do you reckon, uh, B, dude? Yeah. yeah, I said B, yeah. Yeah, you're right. I was waiting for someone to say C, Bellus, because both Bellus and Zyra, or Zero, whatever it is, are mentioned in the movie, but Bellus is the sun that crashes yeah. into the planet, and Zyra is the, is the world they visit. So, uh, yeah, it's a little bit confusing. So, And, of course, we all know planet Houston from Superman 2. So um, very, very cool. Doesn't that look completely artificial? It's like, there you go. So, like, they just walk out of the ship and they go, yep, here we are, brand new world, all good to go. So let's go and party hard. So uh, And, of course, what happens then, of course, procreation has to start so they can rebuild the human race. Oh, there we go. Can be some late nights on that particular world, that's for sure. All right, 1961, how many nude on the moon films were made? Uh, what did you guys say? I said not enough. Yeah, what do you reckon, dude? Two, C. Yeah, well, guess what? I couldn't believe it when I read this, right? It's actually one, and I'll tell you what, there's a movie. That's why D <laughs> should have been the proper answer. <laughs> I, I still think my answer's right. <laughs> I agree it's with a that. subjective thing. So apparently the guy who made these, he made eight nudie movies, and this is the <laughs> second one, second or third one, and he said, oh, yeah, we do a sci-fi one where it's on the move. And I'll tell you what, what would you give – to be that dude there, eh? It's like it's a tough gig being in the acting business, I've got to say. So I'd give him a right tip to be in that role. Yeah. <laughs> nude it's on been, the moon. That's actually what it's, it's called. So uh, it's been, he's abreast of the problem right there. So yeah, yeah, very good. Uh, I just I couldn't believe it. And then I found pictures of it. I go, Jesus Christ. <laughs> anyway, lucky it's a family show. All right. Well, then, 1971. Who was THX 1138's female partner? Uh, you said A, hey, didn't you, Jeff Rowe? What did you say, yep. dude? Yeah, I said A. Yeah, you're right. LUH3417. And the other two are actually characters. So SEN5241 was uh, Donald Pleasance's character, and SRT5752 was the uh, the dark guy who was the hologram. That was his character. So, uh, yes, exactly right. So, and, cool. and they did actually shave their heads for real in this movie, too, which is kind of groovy. 81 is complete. What? And ABC123, he was the puppet in the show, wasn't he? <laughs> 
Yeah, I could not think of anything for that. So, uh, yes. All right, complete the title of the film, The Incredible Shrinking What? I think you both said B, yeah? Oh, that's mm -hmm. right. Jeff yeah. O'Rourke at all. Really Tomlin. Thanks, mate. Yeah, just yeah, destroy the moment. So, Lily Tomlin also did another great sci-fi film back in the day. Her and uh, Steve Martin with um, uh, The Two of Us. Is that oh, all of me? Sorry, all of me, which was a brilliant film. See, what I found funny with this is The Incredible Shrinking Man, which is obviously made like 30 years before this, was a really, really serious film, like really, really mm. hardcore, right? And then you had like uh, like you ones where like The Amazing Colossal Man where it gets really, really big and you've got The Attack of the 50-Foot Woman, which is also really serious. And then you got The Incredible Shrinking Woman and it's a complete farce. It's like a complete comedy. Total turnaround for The Incredible Shrinking Man. Have, personally, I'd like to see The Incredible Shrinking Fanboy, but uh, yeah, as you said, it's a, that's a pretty rare film to say. That's what you call a lost movie. So that's, there you go. All right, 1991. Funny. Actor Christian Slater makes a cameo appearance in what film? You could have said Ghostbusters, but unfortunately he wasn't around in the fan community at the time. What did you guys say? It was Please. Undiscovered Country. He's only in it for about five seconds. What about you, dude? Yeah, yeah, I said C. Yeah, and now I had to hope in all hell that he wasn't in the other two because I had no idea. I just looked it up. But, yeah, he just pops his nose in for that one scene and talks to Sulu and then he nicks off and we don't see him again. So, yeah, about that. That's because he's doing his Tintin impression right there. Yeah, I suppose. So there you go. Well, very, very cool. Yeah, yeah, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> yes, very, very cool. All right. We're up to 2001. Kroll, Limbo. When you think of Kroll, you automatically think of the movie, don't you? Limbo and Atar are all characters from what film? What did you guys think it was? Uh, Jeff, I think I it was. I said Planet of the Apes. What do you reckon, dude? Uh, Ghost of Mars. No, I'm afraid he was right the first time. It is actually Planet of the Apes. Oh, apes. So, oh, uh, unbelievable. Yeah, and I deliberately didn't include Thade because that would have been a dead giveaway. But yeah. all the other guys are gorillas and orangutans and yada, 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 yada. So uh, so you pulled that one out of your furry one. I can tell you that now. So mm. It's got monkeys oh, on the mind. Yeah, Thade. working well. Yeah, mate. Yeah, monkeys yeah. on the mind. <laughs> all right, 2011, who or what is a Zeus? What did you guys say it was? Uh, Real steel. Hey. hey? Yeah, you're right. It was Battle Robot. So we're getting into more familiar territory now. That's why I thought, yeah, some of these are going to be pretty straightforward. And 2021, we already know that Mecha Godzilla was in Godzilla versus Kong. So I thought I'd give an easy, you give you an easy one at some point. So uh, there you go. How good is that? And we're all done. Yay, team. Oh, my God, look at that. It's 27 past nine. We're actually right on time. So there you go. All right, leave it to it. And in the interim, make sure you always <gasps> stay nerdy. Okay, bye for now. See ya.